Hello, and welcome to Knights of the Night Actual Play Podcast. This 5th edition D&D adventure, The Heretic, was written and run by your DM, Scott. And now, please enjoy episode 502, titled, We're Off to See the Patron. Actual play begins immediately. Hello, everyone. I'm Scott, your DM for this 5E adventure, The Heretic. With me tonight, starting on my right, is... I'm Tom. I'm playing Alder Rusha, a human male cleric of Amira, and a skill-seeking rogue. Hi, I'm Mike, and I'm playing Marduk, a male half-orc fighter, graduate of the Academy, and an eldritch knight in the Fist of Amira. I am Jim, playing Grodor. I am a hobgoblin warlock and one of the never-gets-a-night-sleep Fists of Amira, looking for truth, knowledge, and a path through the Cinderwald. I'm John, playing Melody, a female human cleric, third of the exemplar family Harmony. I'm an ex-ambassador turned political operative for the Fists of Amira. I'm Thomas. I'll be playing Gabrielle D'Angelis. She's a female Azamar paladin and a holy Fist of Amira whose belief in the importance of our collective destiny drives her ever onward towards her fated oath of conduct. All right. Where we last left off. Our group of heroes, our Fists of Amira, wrapped up their business in the city of Travail and headed out in the late morning with haste, heading towards the destination of Torghast, where their guide will meet them and lead them into the Hollowlands. While on the road, they didn't have much of any encounters during the day, but during the evening, they stopped for camp just across the river from the Cinderwald. It was the first experience with the Cinderwald for several members of the party, while several other members of the party had some brief experience with the haunted forest in their past. During the first watch, a fog blew in across the river from the Cinderwald and enveloped the group After a short period of time, Grodor woke up from a dream with a start and a pathway opened up through the fog, lit with small little will-o'-wisps of blue light along this path into the Cinderwald. And that's where we left off. I'm going to make a quick statement for the listeners. Just a quick update. Yes, we're aware that Marduk's microphone is... Sounding a little weird, that's because he's using one for a different reason. We'll fix it soon. Don't worry. Okay. So, again, a pathway opens up. The river seems to have disappeared in its entirety. And what you see is you see dark trees, many of them alight with this this purplish burning flame. And there's these maybe the size of... Um, a small, like a, like a halfling's fist, maybe a small fist sized glowing ball of light blue light. And there's many of them leading kind of almost like a pathway through the darkness into the cinder world. What do you do? I'll continue sleeping. All right. Eight hours <laughs> later. <laughs> Who's up? Who was on watch? I believe Marduk had the first watch, if I'm not mistaken, and Grodor woke up with a start from what Marduk figures was a bad dream or a vision. I don't know that Grodor has said anything yet. He's just woken up. And as he wakes up, this pathway, the mists kind of part way, and this glowing pathway through the Cinderwald appears in front of you, like where the river was, so to the south. All around you, Elsewhere is the fog. Yeah, I'm waking everybody up. I'm kind of freaked out that, like, where the frick did the river go? I'm like, I don't know. I don't know if we got moved across the river or if there's just like a doorway across it or what, but my patron is, is insisting that we, uh, follow these wisps. I guess she wants to talk to us or have us go somewhere. Gabrielle blinks the sleep out of her eyes and uh, attacks magic. Maybe there's a gate she offers then starts then getting ready for adventure. Getting dressed in your, like, your chain mail and you're, like, you're getting ready. 
Yeah, I'm going to get ready just on the off chance. I think my watch was next anyway. If we are walking through the cinder bowl, it is a dangerous place to be. Just because there's a path doesn't mean there's it's a safe path. This is very dangerous, period, I think. Alder does much the same, as in get up and putting on his armor and weaponry, but he's also looking at the cinder wall. Do I see a path with blue? Oh, yeah. Yes. Roll. Everyone sees the blue will-o'-wisps that are on the path. It's not just Grodor who sees them. They are evident to everyone. Does uh, Marduk remember this or have any insight about the Cinderwald since he's from there, or is his knowledge obsolete? Right. Knowledge is fairly obsolete. I'm going to say that Marduk, your memory of the Cinderwald is leaving it when you woke up from losing consciousness. Okay. So you know Purple Flame. You know Dangerous. What you don't know is you've never had a little small blue will-o'-wisps lead you on a pathway anywhere. Well, Marduk will activate the light of Amira on his spear to help guide us through this dark wood. How sure are you that this was your patron? We just dealt with a whole rigor moral. As sure as I was last time, but who knows? She didn't lead us astray that time. Well, yeah. I also shouldn't be able to see a pathway from his patron, should I? I don't well, know how this works. I don't think the cinder world is normal enough to operate on basic rules. I uh, understand. I remember a little from being in here myself because it was long before stepping in and not being able to see the way I came in that I just was plain lost for who knows how long. Without a path, you can be in here forever. This buds very poorly. Your statement alone was enough to concern me. Are we sure this pathway is going to maintain when we follow it? Or is something leading us into, and then the path disappears, and then we don't know how to get out of? Stories of the Fae have people disappearing for years or seconds, decades. Uh, I don't want it you're not helping, that. Melody. You're not I'm helping. not <laughs> agreeing that we should do it. Is there any way we can leave our own path as a way out as we go in? Breadcrumbs. I don't I, have anything that isn't probably flammable to purple magic flame. On the other hand, if our destiny is to be cast adrift in time, her face crumples a bit, <laughs> then we're just kind of going to happen anyway, isn't it? I trust that it's not. We seem to have things to do here, so I, I don't think this can impede us too badly. I was hoping to go around it, not through it, but maybe we'll find a quicker way to get where we need to go the road we were going on went alongside it we never had to go through it yeah this is off the path yeah that's the and if i'm not mistaken this is to the south the wrong direction right well we're in the going in the direction that are of our ultimate goal but we're not going in the direction of the city who's going to meet up with our contact who's going to show us where to go maybe she'll know where to go. I have no idea. I'm curious as to see what she needs to tell us. That's so important because she knows, I believe she knows our goals and she's been trying to help us along. So my guess is this is another thing to help us along. Or she may just want something. I don't know. Gabrielle's going to start a basic prayer, but I'm confident that we'll be fine if we go. I brought up the map just she because says. your characters know your country better than you do. The Barren River is to your south. The Cinderwald is to your south. The hollow lands are to your southeast. The city of Tarask is to your almost east, a little bit south. So a pathway going seemingly to the south is not completely the opposite direction. Mm-hmm. It's not southeast towards Tarask. It's not southeast exactly towards the hollow lands, but what you can see of the path leads to the south to start with before who knows what changes it takes once you enter the center world. I don't believe I have this map in my brain. Do we have it physically? Helm tr- has a atlas like, inside right. of him. I think he ate your map. To make Maybe. But if you say travail and he snaps into an atlas and we can take a peek at what we are now looking at. Yes. 
it is conceivable that she might lead us through. I have no personal interaction with her. We only have really okay. We keep faith. referring to it as her. That we know that it's her that's doing this. Oh, she's told me in her dream that she uh, she wants us to come. Okay, so, I didn't have that dream, so that's yeah, good no, to know. Yeah. I'm looking at this map, and if we would go south through the cinder, well, we'd be farther away, more or less, because there's no road. But if we walk into the cinder wall, then two steps, we come out to the east edge of it. We've made a lot of progress. The question is, do we trust Rodor? Do we trust Rodor's patron? I kind of don't have a choice but to trust her. I might keep trusting her until she gives me reason not to. I have faith in our quest. I understand that's what Grodor believes, because that is Grodor's patron. Mm-hmm. I I just don't know. However, the only factor I have in determining how she's been affecting it was with the dice, where it seemed both, I point over at Marduk, Amira had forced a dream in Marduk's head and the patron in her, does, she, does she have a name? The Ashen Lady. Okay. Well, I think it's up to all of us to choose. We're going. I don't want to get stuck in there. We've got things to do. If she needs these dice so bad, we can stop by on the way out. Yeah, I wonder if it's the dice that she, if, if it is the dice that she wants. Can we pray to a mirror for guidance? That's worthy. But Except yeah. we're praying to a dead god. Fuck you. I'm sorry, do you know she's not dead? No, but I have faith that she isn't, and you're a shithole. So, <laughs> point being... Oh, I'm sorry, our entire nation thinks she's dead, but you're right, and I'm a shithole. Alder, I good... might have a better perspective on it than you. I do, too. I'm literally a cleric of hers, which I cannot do magic because she's not giving it. Whatever. Uh, Unimportant. I don't believe in... Because her. you don't believe in her. My... Patron is eternal. She isn't going to die. She's been around a long time, and she could probably answer questions about Amira if, if we get an audience with her. If she's working for her or trying to assist what we're trying to do, I think it's worth a listen to see what she has to say. We are in the middle of voting. Mm-hmm. We have two nays, two yays. Melody and uh, Alder are nays, yes. And, I'm uh, pretty sure Gabrielle and Grodor are a yes. Marduk? I say yes. All right. Brother Byron, if you have any opinions, feel free. I step over and talk to Melody briefly. Okay. Brother Byron, he thinks that Grodor's patron saved him in the reverent wield when the red caps came calling. It was her vision that woke up members of the party who were with the army, mm. brought them to the battle that they would have probably been overwhelmed if it hadn't been for the arrival of Gabrielle and Marduk and others. A fair reminder. That's two visions that yeah. have, gone in our favor she, she seems to know things that are going on in this world that that we are not aware of maybe there's an ambush ahead and she's just staring us around it good I thing is coming three alder Faith, we've been voted out so i'm packing up and ready to go let's go either way let's go do haste so we don't lose much time melody god i'm ready to be proven wrong yeah <laughs> i have a thought is there any way you can give your dragon a leaf or something from this area, and it could lead us out to this area. It's magic in many ways, and it has links to things it consumes. It's a paper drake. The leaf isn't really paper, but hey, I'm trying here. I got I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm sure. <laughs> I'm, guessing, I'm, I'm guessing the drake doesn't want to go anywhere near these flames out here anyways. Well, currently the Drake is in map form because Melody was showing you guys a map of the direction that the path leads as opposed to where Tarask is and where the Hollowlands are. So right now it's not around to complain. 
I I should have made it clear that I was talking quietly to Melody. Not okay. Sorry. Not public. No. No, no worries. Mm-hmm. I can try to take precautions to be able to lead us out, but that's the Fey excel at getting people lost. Yes, that's why I was thinking something magical like your paper trike might be useful, but it was just a thought. I could try. All right, I go back over the wagon and finish getting prepared as quickly as possible. I'm ready to go, gentlemen and ladies. I think I'm wearing leather armor, which is, yes, I am. Much quicker to get dressed in leather armor than it is in chain mail and plate. Yes. So I help pack up other things while they're getting dressed a little longer. Are we bringing our wagon into this conflagration? To Grodor. Is that what you saw in your dream? I would bring it because I don't know if we're coming back this way or not. Yeah. If the path's big enough to bring it, I say we bring it. The initial path that you can see is wide enough for a cart to maneuver through. Whether that stays that way, you have no idea, but right now it does. Hope our horses are up to that. Mm -hmm. Maybe they have more sense than us. But mm, grumbles, grumbles. (laughs) Maybe we need some blinds for them in it. Stop them to see the fire in all directions around them. I'm going to leave a path of marks on the trees uh, using pressed digitation. They last for about an hour, so we at least can see an hour back. That's a good idea. And ourselves, our our mundane survival skills of how to keep navigation in woods. Marduk is pretty good at survival, I believe, and getting through woods. So he could certainly make some marks upon trees and stuff like that to try to leave a path. Is that what you're saying, Marduk? Well, yeah, just there's techniques when you're traveling through the woods of marking your trail so you can find it. I think it's a wonderful idea, and we should try that. My only concern is when I went to bed, there was a river between us. So this is a forest that changes. And that's my only concern, but that doesn't change what we can do. So yes, please do that. And, uh, hopefully it'll be useful and, and we'll be safe. I'm ready when you guys are. We're off. Okay. We're off to see the patron. Yes, you are. You make your way onto the path that is there glowing before you. You know, give me a marching order. I think that would be useful for this particular. I'm on the wagon driving it, so are we all in the wagon together or are we? Definitely um, in the wagon with Tom. Just got to make sure he doesn't get burnt up to a cinder in this world. My initial thought was to be off to the side of the wagon and hidden in case we get ambushed. But this is a burning forest. And there's a chance that I'll end up somewhere else. So I'm going to stay on the path on the side of the wagon, but outside of it. Okay. Clearly within view of anyone else because I'm on the path. Yeah, I'll either be in front or in sitting in front of the wagon. I'll take up the other side, covering whatever flank Alder didn't with his riding on the side. I'm just looking for signs of the clearing that I was in before. The horses seem reticent, even with blinders on. A couple steps down the path, they kind of slow up and whinny a bit and (laughs) paw at the ground, and they seem concerned. Mm. So you need to make an animal handling check, Marduk, to get them to move forward. I would like to uh, give an assist and that I'm being empathetic to the horses. (laughs) Well, sure, you're patting them them and patting them and saying, I'm nervous too. Don't worry. Don't worry, boy, girls. I think once a boy, once a girl, I don't know. I'm just being uh, supportive. So hopefully, perhaps giving Marduk. I'll I'll allow that. Sure. Marduk, go ahead and make your animal handling with advantage. All right. I'll just roll again for the advantage for a total of 15. Which is what you needed. So Mm -hmm. perfect. The advantage definitely paid off here. Alder's coaxing and low, steady voice seems to reassure the horses. And you actually take a little bit of a lead for a second and kind of pull at their their bits and kind of like, here, here we go. Come on, forward, forward. And they start moving forward along with Marduk's coaxing as well. And you're now into the cinder world. What's interesting is that As soon as you stepped onto the path, it became cooler. 
as you know, you're in the southern part of Amira, and it's a little bit warmer than the northern part of Amira. You probably went to bed in 70-degree weather. When you set foot in this path and start moving a little way down it, it's almost as if the temperature drops 10 or 15 degrees. It's cool now. It's a cool night. And you can see your breath in front of you, even though you don't think it's cold enough to be able to see your breath. And even though the woods are burning, but it's not a true fire. It's not putting off heat, right. The flames seem to be magical, obviously, but they're not putting off heat. There is no heat coming from the flames of of purple and lavender and lilac and whatever colors there are. It's just a cold, magic flame, if you will. Fire without comfort. That's really kind of evil. Mm-hmm. Well, I wonder, Grodo, you've been in here before. Is it possible that those flames are actually in another, they're on the other side of the veil? We're just seeing them, but they're not really here? I think they're really here. I just don't think they're, it's just not a normal flame. It's a magical or alchemical flame. I think it's, instead of putting off heat, it draws heat, maybe. The flames burn the things. Maybe it's burning something yeah. else. It doesn't, yeah, it might know. be burning something else because it doesn't. I mean, if it was a true flame, it would burn the ash, the, the trees to ash, and there would be right. nothing here but ash. But you could see the hulks of the trees here, so it leaves them. It just burns something of them, but it doesn't burn them completely away. Funny you should say that, Grodor. As soon as you say the word flames give off ash, you look down, and the floor of the forest and the, and the path that you're on right now is now covered in a thin veil of ash. Careful what you say, apparently. Do you remember in your dream where you met with your patron? Are we getting close? Does, is anything changing as far as looks to you? Grodo? It, it, it's pretty much a maze until I got to the clearing and to this area where these uh, cult did their thing in the middle. But I don't know. I think it's in the middle. Could be anywhere in here. So you follow the blue will-o'-wisps for what seems like maybe 20 minutes, a half hour. At that point, you can notice you kind of hit a sparser area of trees. They're not quite as thick as they had been up to that point. And you look up into the night sky, and it is black, which, of course, you think that makes sense. But the maiden and her sisters are not out. As a matter of fact, when you look a little bit closer, you can even notice that you don't see the pinpricks of starlight. It seems to be black, completely, utterly black. And when you look back towards the trees and the fire and the will-o'-wisps, you notice that the only sense of color that you can actually see are the flames and the will-o'-wisp. The trunks of the trees are shades of gray and black. It's as if the scenery as you were walking through it was drained of color, with the exception of the will-o'-wisps and the flame. Is this familiar, or is this new to me? This did not happen first time you walked into the center world. This definitely feels different to you. There was no path guiding you. There was no draining of all the colors in the plants and wildlife and everything else. You remember it being dark and scary, and definitely there was this edge, but it didn't get colder And none of these things happened when you first went into the Cinderwald, except for when you found the oak. When you found the oak, you remember things being a little bit more muted, the colors, and just being kind of overwhelmed by the flames of the oak and noticing that it was colder at that point. But it wasn't the whole journey. Like, this seems to be happening. It's happening much sooner. If if your goal and you think you're going to go to the oak that's what you're hoping for, this is different. And I tell the others such. And I would say also for Marduk, when you 
escape from the cinder walled, there was no path and there was no frigid temperature, cold breath. It definitely seems like the landscape is changing. Do I recognize any landmarks or? No, the cinder walled is pretty renowned for the fact that it's just a bunch of blazing trees and there wasn't, there were settlements in the time that you're aware of the cinder walled, but you haven't come across any. And this probably wasn't a place that you were overly familiar with anyways, as far as what you recall. Right. Grodor, you said you had a dream? Yes. I've had a lot of dreams about this place. Well, you had one that just woke you up. Right. And led you here. Is this where you met your patron? Conditions are similar when I hit the clearing, but we're not in the clearing. So it's either spread out a hell of a lot farther than it used to be, or there's something else weird going on here. Maybe she's getting more powerful because she has been. I'm not sure. Is there any way you could try to communicate with her? I can go to sleep. <laughs> the only way she seems to be talking to me. About this time, you hear what seems to be best described as a low wailing. Definitely a haunted noise coming out from, it's hard to tell the directions because it's just, the way the acoustics work in the Cinderwald and the way that the scenery is, it just sounds like there's some wailing or moaning. It's both, actually. It's some wailing and then some moaning coming from all around. And it's definitely not a good sound to be hearing. I reach for my rapier just to hold it because in the past it's done some interesting things to warn me of something. It's not vibrating. It's not thrumming. It's not, but you you hold it and look out into the cinder world and you see leading shadows moving, humanoid shaped from tree to tree, from grouping to grouping. It's almost like you can see it out of the corner of your peripheral vision. And as soon as you put your eyes on it, you see nothing but shadows. Mm -hmm. But when you kind of look away, there's something moving on the side of your vision again in the woods off the path. Right. And there's that wailing and that moaning. And it's just, yeah, it's the cinder world is definitely living up to its reputation as far as uh, being quite the scary place to visit. I explain to everyone, I am seeing shadows in the corner of my eye moving from tree to tree. When I focus, they're gone. I start to draw my sword out, and as I'm talking, I'm walking over towards Grodor. And I hold the blade out in front of me, but lean it towards him and say, grab the sword. I'm not handing it to you. I'm holding it, but you hold on to it as well. Yeah, I do that and look around. Do you see what I'm talking about? There, over on the left. No, don't Wait. don't don't look at it. Just look out of the corner of your eye. And I want to know if Gordor has an ability to maybe use magic or see something better than I am. But I'm also wondering if he's seeing what I am. Right, Gordor, you see the same things: fleeting shadows, things that you have seen in the Cinderwold the past when you were in the Cinderwold before. There was a lot of movement off the shadows and lots of just off the edge of your perception, some type of situation going on that's definitely movement and definitely humanoid movement, but you couldn't quite, as soon as you looked at it, it was gone. It was like creatures were moving in the corners of your vision consistently. So when you hold on to the sword, you get the same feeling again. You yeah. definitely are seeing the same things that Alder is seeing. I see what you're seeing, and I've seen it before without the sword's help. It is quite maddening because it makes you super paranoid. I just hope it's the cult, and I hope they're working with the lady to help us. I don't know what, it, but it might not be. I have no idea. There's a lot of stuff here besides the cult in her in this in the woods. There was a path of these blue will-o'-wisps, correct? Correct. 
we were following the path, and the assumption is it didn't suddenly make a 90-degree turn. So in holding my sword and having Crodor hold it, do we see any difference in a faint outline, or do we see scattered will-o'-wisps that these creatures are kicking out of the way to ruin the path? Are we seeing anything that might have been affected? No, you do not. The rest of the crew can't see it. That's an interesting question, but you see the will-o'-wisps still going on a twisting path forward. You do not see them any longer behind you. As soon as you pass the will-o'-wisps, they disappear. So there's no trail leading back the way you came, but there is a path leading forward which seems to be steady and not moving, if I've got your question correct. Do you think we need to stop here? Did you intend to meet her here? If there's still a trail ahead of us, I think we should just keep on following it. Maybe it'll just be a path through the woods. I can keep my sword drawn and keep an eye on them to see if they're approaching in any way. They do seem to be, I I can stare to chase them away if that's what's causing it. I don't know. Everyone else make a perception check, please, except for Alder. Gabriel rolled an 8, very low. Duke rolled a 22 with a natural 20. Nice. Rodor got a 19. Everyone except for Gabriel is also starting to get these shadowy visions in the corners of their peripheral sight, much like what Alder's experienced. Rotor grabs a bottle of liquor and takes a long swig, like starting to get a little shaky, like a little PSD, like, crap, here we go again. Right. And that's an interesting thing because right about when you start seeing the shadows, you start to feel despondent. You feel like you almost are being sapped of your will to carry on. Almost like, let's just stop and make camp. It's got to get better than this, right? Because this is just depressing. This is just, this is just pointless. It's like a despondency starts to set in to your mindset. Not enough to make you change what you're doing or think differently or anything like that. Just this nagging, niggling feeling that, is it really worth it? Is it really that important? Does it really matter to keep going forward? Am I able to use my religion skill to speak aloud a prayer to Amira that is inspiring and emboldening? Why don't you go ahead and make a religion check to do so? And you, of course you can do it. It's just the oh, never mind. of it. <laughs> well, I, I think what the, you rolled a five. And I think what that says at this point, Marduk, is this is unsettling. Sure. The whole situation is unsettling, so your voice is kind of wavering a bit. Well, we walk through a valley of shadow, and uh, we'll probably die, and uh, Amira's life won't do anything for us. Yeah, amen. Yeah, your voice is shaking a bit. You're forgetting a word or two as you're kind of looking off to the side really quickly because the shadows seem to be getting a little closer that moment. Well, I still clutch to my spear and keep the light going, but, yeah, I admit that was not a good uh, plan. Gabrielle, can you back up Marduk and... Like override him with your prayers? You have more link to the gods, don't you? I do, but it isn't exactly in pretty church terms. I'm not that great at religion. I could okay. sing a song <laughs> that'll bolster our spirits. Gabriel busts out a hymn about bravery before trying times. Something like our mythical David maybe took a moment before he went to go head off Goliath and sang a prayer. The ones sung at the uh, hold that never fell. Ah, yeah. Harrow's Gate. Yep. Did I already sing that song, didn't I? Can I uh, give you guidance on that? Sure. I think guidance works. It's just like a extra D4 on top of my roll, correct? Yep. I, I roll performance, then I'll roll a D4. Unless... Sounds good. Oh, boy. Uh rolled a 19 flat, and then a D4 gives me three more for 20. Gabrielle begins softly against the wailing in the distance and the moaning. And now you could swear you you might have heard a wolf howl. Her voice starts off small against the encroaching darkness and shadows and just the 
the burning flame of the cinder wald. But as she goes, she gets stronger and her voice lifts up and she has a beautiful voice. Mm-hmm. And her voice just towers louder and louder against the darkness. And it almost seems, maybe it's your imagination, maybe it's not, that the shadows get further and further away as she sings her hymn of Harrow's Gate to all of you. Even so much as the horses themselves who had stopped in their tracks as you saw these shadows and kind of started talking and you kind of came to a, a quick stop. When Marduk hits the reins, they actually move forward again without a animal handling role because they too were just braced against the darkness that seems to be encroaching in. And you move forward. As another five or ten minutes pass, that maybe I heard a wolf becomes, yeah, there's some howls, to they're getting closer. And the howls are multiple. It's almost as if there's 15 or 20 wolves all howling in unison, not in exact unison, but kind of overlapping and responding to each other and feeding into each other. And it becomes, uh, it just builds anxiousness inside of you as it gets closer and closer and closer. And the anxiousness begins to turn into fear as Gabrielle's song is now a distant memory. And it's been 15, 20 minutes later and these wolves are getting closer and closer and they sound unearthly. They don't sound like a wolf that you would hear in Reverend Weald nearby Temerity where you, you occasionally can hear a wolf call at night. This is just frightening skin crawling type of a howl that come down. It's getting challenging to continue moving forward with that despondency. It's almost like your emotion is being drained from you slowly but surely with each step you take further into the path and down the path. And I would like everyone to make a group charisma check, please, just to find it within yourself and to encourage each other to keep moving forward as you continue walking this path. Okay. I've done this before. Can I roll with advantage? Sure. And I'm trying to bolster the guys like, yeah, this place messes with you. It's not real. We can do it. Keep moving. And got an 18 on okay, my what's roll. Melody? I have rolled an 8. Marduk rolled a 15. Gabriel rolled a 16. Oh, they rolled a 13. All right. When you do a group check, just as a point of bookkeeping, more than half of you need to succeed in order for your group to succeed. So even though Melody throws up for a second, Grodor puts an arm around her and says, I've been here. I've done this. You can do it. Just brace up. You can do this. Just take one step forward. It gets easier if you keep moving forward. And eventually convinces her to start walking again and keep walking. So you continue down the path towards the howling of the wolves. And again, the murmuring and the groaning and just the horrible noises and the fact that you look at the night sky and there's no stars and there's no maiden and no sisters showing themselves at all. As you forge your way forward, as you continue to find the will to take another step forward, you notice that it seems to be getting a little bit foggier out. There are patches of fog in the forest that weren't there before. They're drifting slowly. There doesn't seem to be a lot going on, but it just seems to be getting foggier as if this wasn't scary enough and disconcerting enough. It seems like there's going to be even more obstruction to be able to see your way into the distance through the fog that seems to be appearing in patches here and there. And you continue down the path for another 15, 20 minutes. It's hard to say how long it is. You have no bearing at all. And all these weird things are happening around you with the shadows moving and everything else. And finally, the howling of the wolves is like a cacophony. It's just, it's so close and it's so loud. It just sends chills down your spine that everyone needs to make a DC 12 wisdom saving throw to not get frightened and bolt off the path. 
because it's just so overwhelming at this point. Alder rolled a 17. Melody has rolled a 15. And I rolled a 16. Roduke rolled a natural 1. And well, Gabrielle rolled a 7. Okay. I'm going to bring up another screen. Oh, a battle screen. Yes. It is a picture of the pathway through the cinder wall, what you think is still the cinder wall. Let's go ahead and put ourselves on that map because two of you failed your saving throw. North and side of the map, south side of the map. How about the center? Oh, give okay. us more movement options going in. Okay, we're going to roll for initiative. Melody rolled a 20 for initiative. Arduk rolled a 6. Gabrielle rolled a 14. Alder rolled a 22. And Grodor rolled a 6. You know, it was that wine. It was yeah. that wine, Grodor. Not enough of it. And he's not a drinker. Oh, he's a drinker. He's just not good at it. Fair enough. That's true. Okay, I'm uh, going to roll. Obviously, idea. I need more practice, he says, as he takes a swig. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, you're making me miss my father, Grodor. Oh, that's never good. So the enemy rolled a 21, which is very high, obviously. So you notice these patches of fog that are are kind of seeping into the landscape as you move forward down the path. Uh, I'm going to go with a surprise round, not in the sense that you're being attacked, but in the idea that Marduk and Gabrielle got frightened in the frightened condition right now and in need to do something about it, the fact that they're scared. So I'm going to let Gabrielle go first at 14. What do you do in reaction to just this overwhelming sense of fear overcomes you and you feel like you've got to bolt from what you're doing in in the path that you're walking on? Well, given the rather precarious placement where I am compared to everyone else behind the wagon as it goes through a tight passage, I'll probably bolt off to the southwest. There's another okay. path. I mean, I would try to follow, like, just head further down the path quickly, but you're implying that it's rather difficult to convince myself. It's the path that seems to be scaring you, the fact that you're on a path that seems to be scaring you. Like, you don't want to be on this path anymore. So, Gabrielle, you don't have to do a dash or anything. You just need to do a regular move. Yeah, she'll do her regular move following the swing of this little copse of trees between me and our allies, making it all the way to the other edge of it, but stopping on a fork in the path, not sure which way she wants to bolt next. Marduk, go ahead and tell me what happens to your character. Are you moving the whole wagon? Are you jumping off the wagon? Are you If I'm if I'm frightened, then I would probably be jumping off the wagon and running away from whatever I am afraid of. It's the howls that just kept this creeping sense of doom come upon you that just, then, yeah, so you could move your character wherever you want. You could do a normal move. You don't have to dash. You don't have to do a double move. But this path is leading to death is what you're convinced of right at this second. Is there a direction where I'm hearing the wolves more than one other? It's coming from all four directions. Then if he's frightened, he would hide under the wagon with his face in his hands, whimpering. And to be honest, if I'm frightened, and uh, since I rolled a one, I very likely would have uh, let go and dropped my spear. I'll give you the choice. You can still have the spear and the wagon still moving, or you told the horses to stop, and when you did that, you pulled with both reins violently and dropped your spear and then got off and hit underneath. The wagon has stopped, and I would have dropped my spear. Right as Gabrielle dashes off into a splintering path, the wolves' howls are so loud you just know they're upon you. That's when some of the fog to the southwest starts to coalesce into wolves' heads that are actually growling and snarling and stepping. It's this, it's like 10 foot of fog by 10 foot of fog, so it's 100 square feet 
of snapping, snarling, angry wolves jaws and heads and these blue eyes, the same color as the pathway. You don't see their whole bodies. You just see their heads in their mouths. An occasional paw will swipe out. But there's probably 15, 20 wolves snarling in this gaseous swarm of wolf spirits. And that's what Gabrielle unfortunately runs towards when she bolts from the path. And now we'll start initiatives on regular. Uh, she screams really loud. Thank you for listening to Knights of the Night Actual Play Podcast. If you'd like to send us a question, comment, or feedback, you can reach us in a number of ways, including Twitter at KOTN underscore podcast or by emailing us at feedback at KOTN podcast dot com. And don't forget the iTunes reviews. We also have a Facebook page, which can be found at facebook.com slash KOTN dot podcast. While on Facebook, you can join like-minded folks at our fan page at facebook.com slash group slash KOTN fan. And lastly, there's our blog at KOTNpodcast.com where there's an Amazon link on the right-hand side. For those of you who'd like a more steady way to help us pay the bills, or if you live outside the U.S., you can help by donating to our Patreon page at patreon.com slash KOTN. And please remember to join us next week for more mystery and adventure. Sorry, I thought I muted myself. <laughs> Mike, I, if you have to click on the X card because there's wolves that are going to trip you in the woods, uh, you know, just to say. What happened? I'm joking. Mm-hmm. Charisma save? Is yes. We're rolling? You're making a charisma check, not a save. I'm going to allow on an advantage roll for a re-roll using inspiration, but you don't get advantage again on the re-roll. You just get the one roll. If I drop off suddenly, it's because I've lost power. One second. Okay. Right. Why is the map moving? Is the map moving? It's not for me. You're not seeing it move on Zoom? No. Oh, on Zoom? I don't know. I, I'm looking at it on my screen, of course. It's freaking moving, and I'm not doing it. Yeah, I saw it just for when – when I switched over to it, I saw it really quick. Maybe the up arrow or page up is – We are into haunted land. Yes, and the map <laughs> is haunted as well. I guess. I so, reset it. Dad, use a stock lady scream. It's really undignified. I'm sure I'll find a better one. Yeah. Okay, I mean, so. I literally cannot do a scream this high. It would hurt my voice. Right. Other possible titles for this episode that were available for voting on the Facebook fan page were, I'm ready to be proven wrong. I'm an angel, Alder. Get burnt up to a cinder in this world. This is just pointless. That's what Faye excels at, getting people lost. And as soon as you pass the will-o'-wisps, they disappear. <laughs>